You know, this is really interesting. Um, this was pretty close um, after retirement. You know, I retired December 31st of 2011. So, you know, I've still somewhat, you know, just had retired, you know, and um, so I still look a little tired in this picture, you know, even, even, though, even though I was absolutely delighted to be retired. I mean, it took me three seconds to get over my job. You know, I still look tired in this picture, you know, after 32 years of work, work, working a pretty high pressure job. I think, yeah, look a little tired. Don't look as, don't look as relaxed as I, you know, as I, as I thought I would, you know. Probably if you took it now, I probably would be smiling. <laughs> you know? I look awfully sad. Gee. Yeah. It's a good picture, but I don't know. Tough, tough picture. Belt is out. Belly. Ugh. Well, life is, but it's a good picture. I think it's uh, well done, actually. Not too much hair on top. Some say that I resemble my dad's father, but as I look at this movie, this this photo, and I, I look at the eyes and the, and the kind of smile, I, I can see my mom's mother's smile. So. You know, I must have aged well. Well, I think this is a pretty good picture. Mm -hmm. that, that is as good as anybody can do with the, what they had to work with. Uh, but uh, I'm wearing a yellow shirt, which I do most of the time, uh, being a Hawkeye color. It's a very professional photograph. It's beautiful. It really is. And it's very nice to have a, a photograph at, at this time, I think, when we get older. Uh, and so I'm very happy to have it. Who is that guy? Who is that? That particular photograph, may, I, I feel like I look like an adult. Um, it also makes me look more imposing than I think I really am. And. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, whenever I, 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 I see a photo of myself uh, or even look in the mirror, I'm always amazed at my white hair and uh, etched forehead and, and, and all of that. Um, because, you know, nobody feels their age until I imagine they're really, really old. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. Well, I usually don't like seeing pictures of myself, but this is a very nice photo. In your mind, you think you look one way, and then when you see a picture, you think, hmm, is that how I look to other people? <laughs> I was aware of the photographer from the Oxford Project book, and I knew some of the people that he had photographed for that. I thought it was an interesting project to do a time-lapse photography, kind of, of people and such a span of people. And it's, um, besides the people I know, they were people of rural -ish Johnson County, similar to my uh, family, farm-type people like that. So I thought that uh, Peter had done some interesting things, from what I understand, and uh, uh, I thought it would be nice to participate in a project here in Iowa City. I had, I had no expectations. It sounded like an interesting project, and I wanted to participate in the aging process because I, I don't mind getting older. And also, Ina told me I had to do it. <laughs> I have no memory of it. It just seemed like a good idea, and uh, to be even in the presence of that kind of uh, that uh, quality of a photographer is special. Oh, when I see myself in pictures, um, usually there's a fair amount of critiquing, and then I have to critique the critique by stating, saying that, okay, this is me. So take me 
as I am today. And some days it's easy to do that, and some days it's not. However, I think I take myself as I am better today than I did 30 years ago or 40 years ago. It objectifies how you look. Um, so that when I did photography, I did self-portraits. It was fun to do self-portraits because you could decide exactly how you were going to dress, how you were going to look, what expression, and so on. You were in control, and that was fun. Uh, but um, seeing myself, what it, what it objectifies is that as time passes, you say, if you see a photograph, you notice you really have changed in five years, 10 years, and you, you look older. So um, I'm ac accepting enough of my age that that doesn't bother me too much, <laughs> just a little. <laughs> Photography allows one to go back in time, sometimes when things were better. Uh, uh, times of joy, times of, that are rewarding to remember, significant with uh, people or places that uh, were very special, that uh, make life worth living. Well, my dad had a uh, Kodak camera, I remember, it had bellows on it, and uh, it was fairly accurate, except my dad could never take a picture without cutting the top of the head off. <laughs> and so we have a lot of those pictures. Of course, my mother was 4'11", and my dad was 6 feet, so <laughs> maybe there was a reason for that. <laughs> he, he, could, he looked at her instead of the... <laughs> yeah. yeah, but they're great records of, of your youth, you know, and those were all black and white pictures at that time, photographs. Some of the earliest pictures that I have a good memory of, uh, there was a series that the mother and dad took when I had uh, discovered this piece of candy and picked it off the plate and then gone outside with it. And they showed me licking my chops over the candy and then going over to the swing that was in the backyard and twisting that up and uh, watching while it went down and they got a series of pictures of me like uh, doing that. When, um, when my father died I, I did a, uh, a piece of artwork which actually um, traveled widely and I used one of my favorite images. It's an image uh, when, my, when my father was in the army uh, he and my mother were at a cotillion and the photograph, it rolls out about this large, you know, and you see all these, all of these couples, and some of them are very stiff and very uncomfortable. My mother and father are just, you can tell they are so in love, right? And because my mother was a professional performer, she of course could pose beautifully, but it's just this beautiful young couple that looks so happy, you know. And I've used that image in, 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 um, in not the original one, of course, I've always made copies of it, but I've used that image in artwork because it's such, such, a, such a beautiful image for me. I remember once um, I was visiting my oldest daughter and son-in-law who were in Albuquerque, New Mexico at the time, and we had gone out to some mountains, and Don said, look, there's a snake down there, and he whipped out his camera and took a, uh, the snake was trying to get under some rocks but there was a rabbit there who probably that was her home and she was fighting that snake. So that was interesting to document uh, that bit of nature of a, a rabbit protecting her home, her, her nest. And then later to watch the snake turn away and come up the hill and go into a hole that was about a foot and a half under the path that we were walking on. Glad that he had a hole and didn't come up to the path. But it's fun to watch what people can do with the, the technology that's available today. 
I like going back and looking at the old pictures and remembering the stories that go with them. And in fact, uh, when I'm writing, I like to, I'll go back to the old pictures. I have a picture of my grandfather sitting under a tree and there's a chicken in the background. And it <clears throat> just makes me laugh and think about that wonderful man. I don't, I think there's much too much of this Facebook and Twitter and sending pictures. I don't think, I think you need to have your imaginations and I think people are losing out on using their imaginations when they have all of those Twitter and Facebook and, and it's being misused, I think. Okay. <laughs> I'll hesitate because camera people probably wouldn't like what I would say. I think it's way overdone. I think there are far too many pictures put into Facebook and galleries and I don't know what they're going to do when they suddenly find themselves at my age looking back at this mountain of pictures they have. I, I think it isn't very selective anymore, but the technology is great, the simplicity is great, and we can get pictures of our grandkids, of my sister, of we could of my folks, easily and quickly, and send them on. So I appreciate the technology. I dislike the volume. Can't say a lot more other than Skype. I think Skype is one of the nicest things to have happened because a grandson of ours is in Okinawa and we can talk face to face. And I remember the Second World War when it was months before people got letters, people didn't know, that was so much, so many questions. And now it's, what'd you have for breakfast, you know? And it's just, it's marvelous, great. Well, I think it really is a, a, a good way for families to, to kind of keep connected. Uh, actually, my wife is much more active on it than, than I am, and, and she uh, interacts with uh, uh, the family at large, and and they send pictures and so forth. I, I haven't really gotten that involved. I'm, I'm a little more intrigued by the, the, uh, the texting rather than, it's a little bit more personal, a little more, more direct the other. Uh, I, well, frankly, I, I haven't quite figured out how to upload a picture onto Facebook yet, or if I have, I'm, I'm not sure it really took, you know, that, that, kind, of, that kind of thing. It gets a little frustrating when, uh, when, that, when that happens, but, uh, so I think it, it is a good thing, and certainly it's, it's used in, in my family, but I'm not the one that uh, is that's that involved. We are lucky to have this technological asset uh, to record the stages of our lives. Um, we look back generations, and there are just paintings, uh, for better or for worse. <laughs> I, but I, I think it's fascinating to be able to see a whole life in pictures. Um, from the little, the little tyke running around to uh, those of us who probably ought not to run. Uh, it's, there's a magic quality that's uh, possible in our lives. I've always liked photography. And I, right now, I carry a camera with me all the time to take pictures of that moment. And I want to preserve that moment. Usually, uh, it's just something that is unique. It is something that uh, is uh, interesting. I like animals. I like their activities. People, I don't really take pictures of people, um, unless, of course, um, maybe uh, children, because they're a little bit more um, creative, let's say. And they don't care what they're doing or that somebody else is watching them. And so people are, children are so honest. And I like to catch that honesty.
when I started to be interested in doing it, it was a huge passion for me. And I was then working at the hospital and putting all my spare time into photography and then learning the darkroom work, which is now irrelevant, but it wasn't irrelevant then. Uh, and, and I loved it. And although I stopped doing it uh, probably 10 years ago, I'm still very, very interested in going to photography exhibits and looking at photographs. I'm, I'm, I think photography is a wonderful medium. You see things as possible when you see them in pictures type of linkage. So it has something to do with, with uh, you know, what I, the pictures of the past are somewhat predictive of the future in that way that you what you what you see is kind of what you can envision yourself doing. Well, I really like to take pictures. So I take a lot of pictures and really for me I take pictures because I like the story. So I tend to take more pictures of people, sometimes places, but those are more often buildings with people in them because I like that part of it a lot. You, you make up your stories, you see their age, you see whether they stand up straight, you see whether they're kind of hunched over, you see how they're dressed and whether they at least appear to have money or they don't have money, are they working or not. Often you see what they're doing, what their jobs are or what they're trying to do. You see on their faces whether they're relaxed, whether they're happy or whether they're, whether they're stressed. Um, you know, sometimes you see family relationships or other kinds of relationships. So maybe I just have really an active imagination, but I think you can see a really lot of story in people. Um, I think it's great to have pictures posted, videos done. Um, I think it'd be cool if we could have, this is off the cuff, all right, like pictures of seniors on the outside of buses or on the inside of there you know, active aging or ain't life grand or whatever, maybe on park benches, um, unexpected places where you would see images of people over 50 or 60 or 70. Um, guess what my age is? I don't know, whatever. Silly stuff, but to constantly have realistic images in front of the general population as opposed to what is seen in magazines and um, TV commercials, that kind of thing. In magazines, other than an AARP, you don't see much. You don't see much with older people. I cut out, honestly, I have a couple of ads that I've cut out that had women who were probably in their mid, late 70s, maybe 80s. There's, there's an ad from a, an Italian paper with this woman with this great curly hair that comes way out, totally wrinkled, totally gorgeous. You know, it's black and white, but you can see she has these light blue eyes. And that kind of advertising, you know, that's sort of what you want to see. But mostly it's, most of the older people are pretty benign. They're playing with their grandchildren or their golden retriever. I mean, I'm an older adult now. I have my Medicare card, and um, no, I've been retired for two weeks. And so I don't do those things. I mean, you know, what are we doing? We're, I'm in yoga class. No, I'm having coffee. I'm meeting with my students or trying to learn to cook Indian food or whatever. I mean, show us. People are really varied. It's not... I don't think it's that we have to aspire to be anything, but it's kind of, you know, here's who we are. At the same time, don't make it like everybody's out on a cruise ship and, um, oh, gosh, I took up bungee jumping at, you know, 70. Not that, but just, you know, we're a lot. And so, like, show that. I mean, I have friends who go, oh, God, I wish I was in my 30s again. I looked so good. I would never go back because as you get older, um, you be truly become wiser. I mean, you know, you, do, you think back, you go, oh, I can't believe I ever, ever did those things or, or thought those things. You truly become wiser. Um, your relationships are much stronger. You know, they're, they're, mu they're much truer. Uh, you know, you just have all this knowledge, right? You have all this knowledge. Your perspective is just, just more, just, just, just more grounded, 
and um, I'm always looking forward. I'm always looking forward. My father used to say, you know, when you have a birthday, you just celebrate that you made it through another year, you know. And so, so for me, you know, turning, turning 60 was, was an amazing thing for me. It's like you made it. You, know, you got through all, the, all those years. You know, some, there were some really hard times, really difficult times, emotionally, physically, you know. And, you know, and you got through all that. So this is a time for, this for every year for me is a time for celebration. After I was married and my children went off to college, I spent 20 years here at the University Hospital running a laboratory, trying to bring it into the current age and night and day working with it. And I was single at that time. And then suddenly in my 50s, I met my second husband and retired not too long after. And um, life just went like that. Life became his children and my children and a new home and travel anywhere we wanted to go all over. Uh, so many things that I had never had before. Um, he's a marvelous guy and my life is probably the best at this point it's ever been and has been if I go back 20 years and I don't know how far here. <laughs> we'll see. It took me, I don't know about everybody, it took me till I was 30 to be sort of a fully functional, you know, human being. And then, so then you're really in the meat of the learning process. The 30s were great. 50s were fabulous. Now you're in this other place, you think, well, wait, I just kind of got it all together. Really, I only have, maybe, if you're lucky, you have a third of your life left, you know, and who knows? Who knows on that? So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's such a, a process, I guess. The 50s, um, I thought the 50s were fabulous. I thought it was a time when you really, it all kind of came together. A lot of things made sense. I had a lot of energy. Um, I had a cup. I had three goals for when I turned 50. I, I did that, you know. I mean, and they were ranged from taking my son to his first concert, going to Greece, you know, getting out of a bad relationship. Did that, you know. So it was like power years. I thought they were pretty fabulous. The 60s seem more, so far, more contemplative, you know, like, like a transition time. That's what I think. Like, this is a transition decade for me. And so, we'll see. Ask me again when I'm 70. I don't think I'll be bungee jumping. Pretty sure I can say no to that. But, you know, then I don't know. Otherwise, we'll see. I, I'm not really that different than when I was 40 years ago. I mean, What's in my head is still the same. Um, I haven't really changed that much. Uh, my outlook on life is still positive and rosy, and I look forward to continuing. Um, I also look forward to that next great adventure after it's done. Um, I, I just I have a, pos a very positive view of it, you know. Think, there's bad things, but for the most part, you know, they're going well for me and for the people around me and the ones that aren't, I try to help and, you know, you do what you got to do. After 50, most of it would be uh, some of the physical changes. You know, if uh, a person is lucky enough when they're young to have energy to do what they love and be able to do what they, you know, what they enjoy doing, that at, at about 50, uh, you start to realize that uh, you, uh, uh, most of your life is over. And so you start transferring some of your thoughts about how you want the rest of your life to be, and then uh, making uh, compromises as regards those physical limitations. There's just some things you can't do anymore. And it's a process of learning to, to readjust yourself to those kinds of changes. 
and to reorganize uh, how you and, and to really decide just how you want to spend these few precious years. I, I'm just fully amazed. I have a completely new careers now as far as non-paid, but <laughs> I have things going on that I never dreamed I would be able to do. And it is just really a fantastic life. Uh, Ina Lowenberg keeps saying, you know, aging isn't for sissies. And I don't know if I really agree with that uh, sentiment, but uh, it's just, a, it's really interesting aging, and it's really a, a trip, to use an old term. And uh, uh, watching myself age, well, that is kind of interesting. Just, it's just interesting. It's just you know, you, you know, you come out of yourself a little bit more when you get older, and you know, kind of observe things and observe yourself going through things, and um, yeah, it's interesting. I constantly have to kind of slap myself in the face every now and then and realize that I'm not a kid anymore, and I goddamn it better not behave like one. So that's interesting. It's just an age. I mean, it's just it's just a year. You know, we are we are still vital. We still have a lot to offer. You know, to the world. You know, we still have the ability to learn things. We still have the ability to keep ourselves healthy and strong. I would just people to know that it is just a number. You know, it's just a number. There's so many things that we can do that younger people can't. I, it's, it's amazing. Um, as I see the, the people who are making good things happen, more of them have gray hair. <laughs> uh, and we've, we've, we've been over the road. We know where the bumps are. Uh, and we also know where the smooth parts are, and we aim for those and try to, try to guide other people into them. Every year is a gift, uh, or can be a gift. Every year can be a gift. There are some things that tear one apart, but it's possible to go on from those. Uh, the loss of a loved one is heartbreaking, but there is an after. There is an after, and one needs to seize that and go on, because there's so much more joy and usefulness possible. Oh, there I use the joy again. <laughs> the, the, the manufacturer of the, uh, the soap is very grateful, I'm sure. I, th I think one thing about, uh, about uh, aging, one uh, is confronted with the fact that uh, we're all in a, in a terminal situation and that uh, therefore there's, there's no point in in making long-range plans, um, one should focus on on uh, on every day and, and try to squeeze it for for all that it's uh, all that it's worth. I think I have a lot of a lot of goals that are sort of day to day. Get this done. Get that done. I, I don't know if I would say I have any have any great. Uh, like a one, one driving force goal. Uh, you know, I think that some of your goals remain the same as far as, you know, improving your, improving your health or, or uh, improving your relationships with people or uh, that kind of thing. I think, I think that's probably as close to a goal as to, you know, if you, if you can illuminate most of the things that you feel and think that that's pretty, that would be a pretty, a, you know, a good goal just to sort of spread what you feel and think. Living every day for all it's worth. And uh, I don't, I, I, I'm happy with who I am and what I'm doing and I don't have, I don't have any big goals in mind. I find joy with my family. I find 
a lot of joy of coming here to the Senior Center with taking classes, meeting new people. But I think probably the biggest joy comes from the, those two little ones who spend some time with me and we can giggle and play games and hide and seek. But that's a lot of the joy. The greatest joy in life for me is being able to read just as much as I want to. And uh, I spend, I do, I take a lot of classes at the Senior Center and uh, that uh, has just been uh, a joy, a real joy. I was so much wanting to be a mother. To see these kids grow up so successful in their lines of in, in, in their lives, and uh, good parents themselves, uh, good husbands, good kids, uh, and, uh, and 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 that's the personal in family joy. And then uh, working with gays and lesbians and interviewing them to let the listening public know we have jobs, we pay our taxes, we're not that much different than you. I teach Tai Chi here at the Senior Center and it gives me joy because I meet really nice people. And it's brought me joy because I know people all over through uh, the Taoist Tai Chi. And um, I don't know, I just, I enjoyed being with people. I enjoy taking classes here too. But um, being involved, being involved with people, not staying at home, watching television and knitting by myself. I, c I could say a, a, a lot of things. Uh, I'm great. There have been a lot of things in my life that I thought were, were hard things or tragedies in my life, but uh, I'm grateful that they've turned into opportunities rather than downers or things to, to feel bad about. Uh, I'm grateful <clears throat> that I had uh, ancestors who, who gave me the faith that I have in people. and. Uh, my grandmother's uh, always telling me, you know, that look look beyond the surface of what what you see. Look beyond it. Don't you know? That's hard to do. But you, you just probe. I used to not mingle mingle as much with people, and then when my husband's in this very public situation, I decided, well, I'm going to enjoy every minute, no matter where I am. And that, that just opened the doors to having lots of friends around the, the whole country and even the world. So it, it's been a good, good life. <laughs> People should just keep looking at, until they find what they want. And then once you've found what you want, just go right ahead. In fact, uh, SSRO, I, I don't have, know the quote completely, but we're ending our show with, reach for the moon. If you don't make it, you'll be among the stars. Mm -hmm. So I like that. <laughs>